What's up, Pisces? It's Jesse with 44 Astro with another general tarot reading for 88 Lionsgate, 88 2023. It's for Pisces Sun, Moon, or Rising, or any individuals um, that have strong Pisces in their chart, whether that be like a stellium, a couple conjunctions. Uh, maybe your most aspected planet is Neptune. Ooh, things are trying to jump out. We're going to get this uh, flowing first. Ooh, okay. Cards are just flying out for you. Holy crap. All right, we're going to stop. All right, we're going to stop. That's on the bottom. All right, so. Um, Pisces can be strong in your chart in many different ways. You could have Neptune and Pisces with a bunch of aspects on it, um, and especially if it's touching your sun, moon, or ascendant, because then it's going to be really pertinent in your chart. Um, you want to know how, how tight the orb is, which just means like um, how close the aspect is in degree. Orb just means degree. It's a fancy way astrologers say degree. Um, so if it's an exact uh, zero orb, an exact aspect, it's going to be a strong aspect in your chart. It's going to play a big role. And, um, you know, if you break down a natal chart, they're all going to be di in, uh, in different degrees and different orb. So that's going to kind of let you know the, which, which aspects are the strongest and what's going to play the most prominent role in your life. And, you know, Pisces can can play play into your chart and strength in any way with Neptune, with um, maybe your um, midheaven is in Pisces, right? Your your 10th house, so that's going to be like your vocation. It could be your 9th house too, but most of the time midheaven will be 10th house and maybe it has Neptune in it, right? So then that's going to make you have like a, a really, um, a life of service almost certainly to other people trying to help heal people. Um, and, and that's really what Pisces, a lot of it's about because it's the end of the Zodiac. Um, Pisces is a very misunderstood sign overall. Um, in my opinion, just because people are always like, well, Pisces have a little bit of every sign in them. It's more because Pisces is represented by Neptune. And if you understand Neptune, it is like, and it's the end of the Zodiac. Neptune is about oneness, complete oneness, no boundaries, complete expansiveness, like everything being absorbed together into one, right? And so in a Pisces individual, it can be hard to find your own individual autonomy in anything because you're you're represented by a planet that's only no boundaries, everything is one, right? It's that 12th plane of existence, the plane of the gods. That's why it's associated with um, psychic ability. Like in yoga, you have the 11 material realms, then you have the 12th, which is like where Shiva is or um, where the gods are. And Shiva has a moon on their head and a trident, which also represents Neptune. And that is why in the tarot um, that... The moon is not associated with cancer. It's associated with Pisces, right? And that's why it's about healing, right? It's about um, it's about sharing yourself completely and giving selflessly, right? But people take advantage of that on Pisces, and it's really upsetting because um, Pisces are really sweet and good people. And that, and, and many times because of that, individuals take advantage. At least the wrong people will. They're, I mean, you can always find your tribe, right? But life is about lessons, you know? We learn lessons through, through our experiences with individuals because they're our mirrors, right? And um, that's why Pisces is very psychic sign because it's 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 attaching to that that twelfth realm or the, the realm of the gods, and it's you know it's also sadly about loss because of that expansiveness, right? Because it's like losing all boundaries, losing all individuality, and making it all one. And sadly, we do we have an individual experience. So if you, if you stay in that complete expansive uh, selfless nature to where you, every you, you want everything to be together and harmonious as one. In the material world, it just kind of doesn't work like that because we learn through conflict. We learn through opposites, through comparison. But the goal is that that oneness. And then like when you're at the highest level and you're at the end, like in the Kabbalah, Kether, it's represented, the planet that represents it is Neptune, right? It's it's the top, it's the end, and Pisces is the end of the zodiac. And so the goal is oneness, right, in, in that spiritual realm. But it's it's within that spiritual realm finding your oneness. But you are still living a material, you still have them 11... Uh, planes of existence that are the material, right? And string theory, which is quantum physics, actually associates very closely with that, with those realities. And it's interesting, yogis, yogis have it down, man. The yogis knew it long before all this science. Um, so that's that's super interesting. But anyway, let's get to the uh, let's get to the reading. I'm I'm done rambling on about astrology and Pisces. I have a strong twelfth house. The only reason I talk about it, twelfth house is it can be lost, it can be hidden enemies, it can be foreign lands, it can be psychic ability, it can actually be incarceration too. Um, Loss of freedom, really, because um, Pisces will give themselves so much that they'll even lose their freedom. They want to make everything, um, they want to give themselves so completely and make it all one that, you know, they can lose themselves completely in it. And like, it's kind of like a loss of freedom. But astrology, we're not all a slave to astrology, right? It's understanding those energies, right? We, especially if you know them. If you know them well and you study, you know your birth chart and what everything means, 
you can know the energies and you can feel them when they happen, when the influence and when the transits happen. And, and, and through that knowledge, you can actually change your actions and, and use that energy. You can you do the inner alchemy and use it in a way that's beneficial, right? So like you know that you want to ab- absorb into this situation to make it one because you want to make it beautiful and, and, and give your love and, your, and yourself into it completely. But, you know, you can do that to an extent, right? Spiritually in, in the way that you connect. But when it comes to the relationship in of itself, you need to always maintain your individual sovereignty and, and take care of yourself because, you know, you really only have yourself because you only have this individual experience. We have the I experience. It's just the way it is, right? Um, that's the way we see things. And, and with Pisces, they, you know, they, 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 they want to see it as the collective because they're at the end there when understanding the oneness that everything is, right? And it's, it's, it's big energy. And that's why they're also connected to the other side and very psychic and very dreamy. And very artistic. Like Pisces moon, you will be artistic. You will visualize in ways. And if the moon is touching Pisces, it's even crazier how good you'll be able to visualize and create art. So the current situation or the question involves around the death card. You have the seven of pentacles and the nine of rods. So it's like your question is about um, something you feel chained to or something that's like you feel like maybe it's holding you down. Um, Because even he's looking down at these things, right? These these things, it looks of value, and maybe you feel like you're not able to see the value in yourself or in or even in your relationships right now, right? Maybe you don't feel you're not seeing the value of it. You feel like you're working really hard, and you're wondering if you know you're going to see the value in in whatever this this relationship is. It could definitely be a relationship, but it could also be um, just some kind of um, something that that you're chained to in a way. Like it could be vices, it could be drinking, it could be. Um, it could be drugs and have to be though. It could be a way of thinking for sure. Um, it could be a relationship, people. You know how how you how you look at relationships, um, and you're trying to and you're trying to f- see the value in it, or you want to feel like you're valuable within it, and you're working hard for that. And you are valuable. Make no mistake. Everyone has value. Everyone, no matter what the situation. Or what, what anyone else thinks, right? This is your current path. So it's, it's moving forward, right? You have the chariot, you have the, the knight of pentacles, and you have the seven of, um, of swords. So it could be in a relationship with, a, with an earth sign in some way. It could be a materialistic individual. It could just be that you're um, trying to, try, this is someone who's really looking at the pinnacle. That's, that's what they look at is the pinnacle, right? All these pinnacle cards. They're really nurturing that pinnacle. And maybe that's what you're trying to, you're moving forward toward is like a nurturing type of energy, right? And you're trying to strategically figure out either how you're going to do that or you're navigating it in a current relationship, how to feel valued like that by your significant other or by someone you're trying to attract or somebody that you will attract or you're trying to attract this type of individual who's very stable and nurturing, right? You're trying to figure out your strategy for how to do that. Right? And with the chariot there, it's it's a victory card or moving forward. That's why I don't really look at this seven of swords as like somebody taking something from you. Now, could it be somebody taking something from you? I guess possibly. But it just doesn't feel like that. It feels like you're being strategic. You're trying to figure out what, what you want to give and what you want to take in, in, in a specific relationship maybe or in a specific situation. Or if you do feel like someone is taking something from you, right? You need to move from that, you know, with the chariot there. You need to move from that. Especially if they're taking whatever, if they're, whatever they're taking is like money or like um, material in some way. But it really looks like you're just trying to be strategic. You're trying to figure out how how to feel valued in a relationship or in a situation. Maybe trying to be attractive to others even. Trying to see how to make yourself seem valuable to others. This is the other path. This path this path is doesn't look great at all. It's got this is one you can choose to take, right? It's got the tower there, something suddenly happening, right? Something out of nowhere it just happens. Boom. And it's like a drastic change, things crumbling down. And like you need to make a decision about it. It's forcing you to make a decision. Either you don't want to make the decision or you don't know what decision to make. And it's keeping you up at night, right? It could be that like if it is a relationship, you're you're debating on like leaving it, right? You're or you're breaking on burning it to the ground because maybe you feel like you're not being valued or something's being taken for you. You're not or you're being taken advantage of in some way. You feel like, you know, you feel like moving forward materially. But like something could be like holding you back or you feel like something is holding you back. If it has to do with work or anything like that, it could definitely be the case. But it's saying move forward victoriously either way. Like the path you're on, you're going to be moving forward it looks like. 
and figuring out what it is that you want and what is valuable to you. And that's what it feels like. Because over here, it feels like it's just burning to the ground and it's driving you crazy over here. But over here, it feels like moving forward, if you move forward confidently and nurture what it is that you want and do it strategically, you're going to be fine. And that's what it seems like it's doing over. This is saying don't worry, right? Because this is in the advice, right? Saying don't worry. There are good people around you. And that's what the Six of Cups can represent is good people around you, right? It could be family. It could be people from the past, but it could definitely just be family. It could just be somebody offering something to you saying don't worry, right? You're going to be, you're going to get what you need, right? They're going to, it's going to be offered to you, right? Now he's offering a cup to that, to that other individual, right? It could be, it could be children, but it's like someone's going to offer something to you, right? So you don't have to worry, right? Because it's going to be, something's going to be presented to you of value. And you're going to feel your value and you're going to get your value and you're going to get your value of validation. Like someone's going to, someone's going to show you your worth. They're going to help you be emotionally. And it could be that this is an earth sign, right? It's coming in. For sure. Or you're trying to attract a specific earth sign. Fascinating. Could definitely be. But it looks like, you know, that you're trying to trying to find something valuable or trying to find the value in in the situation or with in a, in a situation could be work, could be could be a relationship. Definitely could be work. You're trying to find the value of either staying there. Um, and maybe you want to move on to, to do something different. But it's saying if you're worried about money in any way. Saying, don't worry. Like, the value's coming. You're going to be shown the, what's valuable. And you're going to feel valuable. And the outcome looks like work. This definitely could be work, right? It could definitely be work. You're planting seeds. You're working hard. You're feeling a slave to the ground. You're feeling a slave to work. Right? So maybe it's not a relationship. I mean, it could be because the devil does have two people chained together, but you could feel chained to your job. This is saying, like, over here you may just leave it suddenly and you're worried about making a decision, right, of just, like, leaving it suddenly. This is saying just keep working hard, move forward, right? And be strategic. And this is the Eight of Pentacles, right? Eight of Pentacles, the Hangman, and the Seven of uh, Cups. So it's like a new perspective for sure, right? You're working hard. You're, you're working. You want, maybe you have a new idea about what you want to do for work or how you want to make money. Or you're working on just getting a new perspective in general, right? A new perspective from all these ideas you may have or are these emotions or all these things going on within yourself. You're trying to gain a new perspective and you're working hard at it. And it's not always the easiest thing to do. But it's interesting that it's through our actions, the things we actually do, that we can really, you have to do that first. You have to really change your actions before you can really change your thoughts or your ideas, right? Because changed action is like showing physically and materially in the universe that you're changed or that you're changing. And then everything else will follow suit. Everything else that's kind of like, sensory and 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 then because that's really what thought is and that's what like um feelings are they're more of like a react they, they're almost like a reaction a lot of times not always but they can most of the time they are some kind of reaction a visceral type reaction to something like it could be a thought reacting to a feeling a feeling reacting to a thought but once you change your actions within that they will almost always follow suit and that's the best way to change right so like you just got to do the work you got to do the actual physical work of changing yourself materially the actions that you take and that'll help you with your perspective and your feelings right so it's like oh man i'm worried about my health or i'm worried about this or that and it's like well what you want to do is do an actual change like start exercising or something or actually change your diet or anything like that and that's showing that's showing the universe that you actually physically want to do it and then the rest of the results are going to come the way you think is going to change like if if if, if you're like oh you know if you if you're, you have low self-esteem like in yourself you don't you don't like the way you look or like anything like that right start changing the way you dress you know maybe dye your hair anything like that go in, you know get, give yourself a reason to look in the mirror man do take an action and be like wow man i really like this and then you'd be surprised that everything else follows suit because you start feeling better and you start acting different it all just goes into it but it always generally starts with an action if you want it to be a, a lasting change it always starts with an action you gotta take a step, you know. You gotta, you gotta put forth. You can have all the great ideas and all the, all the wonderful feelings, but if you're not taking action, right? You're not, you're not, you're not, you're not doing yourself justice or do, doing the world justice, right? Let's see what the devil got to say. It's some kind of wish here, or some kind of healing. Yeah, it's like emotional healing. Something that you thought was futile, like, or something that you thought couldn't be healed, or, or something that you feel is futile in your life. It could be with work. Like you're like, ah, oh, I just don't even want to work anymore. You have a wish about it. Right? And it's like a healing around it or, or a wish or a change around 
around this, these thoughts. It could even be thoughts. But in this deck, the Seven of Swords is called Futility. So it's like feeling like it's, it's useless in a situation. But it's surrounded by the star. So whatever the situation you feel hopeless about, it's all good. Because the star is there. The wish is there. right? The healing is there. This is also a card you could associate with healing. The Knight of Cups. Right? Moving forward emotionally, bravely. Look at the wings on his back like an angel. Like it's all around you. Like the healing is there. It may feel futile and feel, feel painful, but the healing is there. You're, like you will be healed, no doubt about it. It just feels that way right now. You feel either like a slave to a, to, to a situation, some kind of loss, some kind of situation that you, that you feel chained to in some way. It could be, definitely be work, a lot of work cards here. And maybe it's like, oh man, you just feel like it's, it's taken from you in some way. Like, but the healing's there. The healing is there. No doubt about it. I'm kind of curious where the Seven of Swords is right here. Is it you being strategic in, in this situation? Or is it um, is someone being you know, sneaky and take trying to take something from you? That's what I'm kind of curious here. What do we got here on the Seven of Swords? I mean, I think it's going to be good. You just got you to gotta keep working. I do that inner work, the inner alchemy. Easier said than done. It's easy to say. A lot different to do it. No doubt about that. That's why that's what not that's what the knowledge of astrology can help you. And, and you know, and, and it's it's interchangeable with psychology. Those two things are intertwined completely. I mean, and spirituality is also intertwined with it. You know what I mean? So it's just it's just what it is. I mean, I use those things to, to get myself out of a very dark place once upon a time. These are all things that helped me, helped me learn about me. And then, I made, then I was able to, you know, use the energies and, and, and be successful beyond what I ever thought I could be. No, ooh, right there. No doubt about it. I really, you know, there was a time where it, was, it just felt hopeless. But, I mean, I fought through it and made it through. And anyone can do it. If I can do it, anyone can do it. I have no doubt in my mind. Just, you just got to work. You got to believe. You got to trust yourself. Take the actions. Love yourself. Love that. Know thyself. Know and love yourself. And you can also know and love others. And know and love the world. Right? You got the Six of Cups, which is pleasure. But you also have the Five of Swords, which is defeat and indolence. Eight of Cups, which is like feeling stuck in this deck. Right? So it's like maybe, maybe that's what it is. It's like if maybe you're feeling stuck at a job. You don't feel the pleasure anymore. Like you don't feel any pleasure in, in whatever this is that you're doing anymore. And you want to move on. Right? You feel defeated in this situation. And it definitely could be around work, right? Work can be monotonous. It could be in a relationship, but I don't really see a lot of relationship cards. It could just be in, a, in, in your own current disposition, like the way you feel about things, right? You're just tired of feeling that way. Or you're tired of um, sabotage, self-sabotaging. Or maybe you feel like others are trying, yeah, maybe your social group, they're trying to sabotage, you feel like they're trying to sabotage you. But I don't even see a lot of court cards or like social groups here. It feels like it's, it's right there. It feels like it could be work, for sure. It feels like it could be a specific relationship. Oh, yeah. This is all kind of ending over here, yeah. This other path where it's like the tower, it all crumbling down and not being able to make a decision and like it keeping you up at night. Yeah, look at the cards that clarified it, right? You got Ruin, which is the Ten of Swords. You got Worry, which is the Five of Pentacles, and you got the High Priestess, right? Yeah. Whatever it is, it needs to come to an end. It's an ending of a cycle over here for sure. But if you give in to despair, it's going to be tough. You don't want to give in to worry and despair because those types of things, it's a spiral, right? Depression is very real and very dangerous. There's always people out there we can turn to, right? There's people out there that love us no matter what we think, right? I love you, okay? Because we're all brothers and sisters in this, no matter what. And we're all trying to get through the same, the same thing called life. So if there is some kind of situation that you feel chained to, whether it's work and you feel like it's beating you down, um, I'd say, you know, you need, to, you, need to, you need to leave the situation, but there's two different ways it can happen. You can let it crumble on its own, and that's... This looks like a brutal path right here. It looks just like it looks like an ending. It looks like a lot of worry. And like 
and it's and it's, it's intuitive that it, that that, that it, it will happen this way, or that it's it's like secrets about it, right? Because our priestess can be secrets, and with with the two of swords there being blind, it's like something that you can't see, right? In this tower situation, so you definitely want to avoid this path. So the path that you're on, moving forward and trying to create whatever this is, something that you value or trying to feel valued is what you need to do. But don't overburden yourself. If you don't feel pleasure in the situation, if you feel stuck, you can change it. It's within your power to change it. That's what free will is all about, right? You can definitely do that. No doubt about it. It's definitely some kind of end of a cycle, right? It's, it's, you're in a big karmic... It, it looks like a big karmic type transformation that's going on. Big shift in your life. And that's the one thing that that happens to all of us. The one constant is change, right? And it can be painful, and it, or it can be it can be scary, but it's necessary. And it's always for our betterment, whether we realize it or not. A lot of times, in when you're in the thick of it, you can't really you can't really see the good. And I know this well. I've been in some deep holes in my life, no doubt about it. And I'll eventually expound on all that one day, and then you'll know that I'm telling the truth. That I do understand. I'm not just speaking from a place of like, oh, I'm here and you're there. I'm just going to give you advice without living it. Like, I give relationship advice because I've been in a relationship for 21 years successfully. I give psychological advice because I have been in one of the darkest places a person can be in and managed to survive. And I have all the evidence to back it up. Make no mistake. So I know it can be done. You're strong enough to do it. If, if, if you're feeling down, you're strong enough to do it. Keep moving forward. That's what this is saying. Keep moving forward. You got this. Keep moving forward and work on it, and you're gonna get exactly what you want. The new beginning is gonna happen in its own way. You know what I mean? And and, you, and you're gonna have the shift, and it, and it has to happen. But you get to choose the way that it happens. So know that you can't control the things that happen around you, but you can control how you react to them and how much you give to them, how much thoughts you give to them, how much feelings you give to them. It's not that you need to block anything out. That's never good. Don't ever try to block a negative feeling or a negative emotion. You always want to acknowledge it. Give it its place. You want to integrate it. You want to understand it. Because if you try to block it, you're pressing it down into your unconscious. And the more you do that, the, the heavier, the, or the stronger the pressure gets. And then it bursts forth from your subconscious into your conscious world. And it, that can be dangerous. But when you integrate it, you give it its place and you acknowledge it. It doesn't have to do that because it has its place. It feels acknowledged. Even if it's a bad feeling, right? It's not about being perfect. It's about being complete. That's what Carl Jung said, and he's right. Complete means knowing everything about yourself. Even the, what would be considered a negative or taboo aspect of yourself, right? It doesn't matter. It's who you are. You ain't got to tell nobody else. You can't if you really trust someone. It's good to have a mirror, but it's just good to know yourself thoroughly. Right? Don't search for perfect. You want to, everybody wants to improve. That's what that's what life is about. It's about love. It's about love. It's about growing through love, through struggle sometimes. You know what I mean? And it's it's why life is so beautiful for people. Ooh, right there. I want to see what this what this worry is. Oh yeah, it's 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 faded. New beginning. I ju I just said it when I was talking. New beginning. Will of fortune too with the new beginning and the final judgment. So like. Got the Fool, which is a new journey for sure. Got the Wheel of Fortune. And then you have the Aeon in this deck, which is Final Judgment, right? So that's what it is. You're passing through this final karmic test. And the wheels are turning. And you're about to be on a new journey. And it's a beautiful thing. It's hard. It may be hard to see right now. But I guarantee you it's a beautiful thing. You're going to get a whole new perspective. It's going to teach you a lot. It's going to make you strong. That's what it does. That's what our struggles teach us, how to be strong. We need it. It's hard to say because if you're just, if, if everything goes hunky-dory all the time, you're not going to be motivated. Most people will not be motivated. That's why trines and sextiles really aren't that great in a chart. <laughs> okay? You want to look for the squares. You want to look for the oppositions. You want to look for the conjunctions. Those are the things that are going to move you. Those are the things that are going to teach you and shape your life. Sextile is something you're already good at, but you have to discover that you're good at it, right? So you may have to put a little work in that. A trine is something you're good at and you know you're good at it. 
and it generally won't necessarily play a role. It can, but it won't necessarily play a role because you're already good. It's com you're comfortable with it. An opposition is something you have to balance out, right? You have to balance out. They're going to be in opposite signs, and that's actually easier than you think because when it's just looking at left and right, you can balance left and right or up and down. Now, with a square, you can't balance up with left, so it's a little more difficult, and squares will really motivate you. To uh, a lot, people with lots of squares, if it doesn't break them, they become really powerful and important people almost always. Especially people with grand squares. That'll really make you learn. And I'll go over that hopefully eventually in some astrology videos. If we ever get to that point, that's the hope. I'm trying to draw a moon card to tile this together for Pisces. Pisces is, you know, one of my brother or sister signs is a Scorpio. So I have a lot of compassion for Pisces. I have a lot of good friends that are Pisces. I know a lot of Pisces. Um, every one of them is a good person. Every one I've ever met is a good person, and they're sweet. Every single one of them. All of them have experienced loss in some way, too, which is really weird and odd. But it's just the way it works. Pisces is the last sign, you know what I mean? Ooh, they got they have big karma to deal with, like big karma, because you're at the end, right? Ah, good card. Meditate and contemplate. New moon in Pisces. We're going to do a new moon reading, by the way. Uh, coming up new moon and we're, we're going to see what the energies are hopefully um we get some kind of clarity and there's like an energy shift and I know there always is with the moons right that's why there are mansions of the moon all grimoires and ancient magic is based off of the moon for a reason because there are mansions in every sign and a certain amount of degrees it's a specific mansion for the moon it represents a specific thing i will eventually um i have a lot of grimoires i've read that i have downstairs um I'll eventually go over, I'll polish up on some of it, and I will uh, make a video on it too, hopefully in the future if we get it all. But yeah, meditate and contemplate. That's what I was saying, integrate, right? Don't block, don't force, just integrate. It's okay to have an intrusive thought. It's okay to have a negative feeling. We all have them. It feels like you're alone because we have an individual experience, but you're not alone, you're never alone. And Pisces should know that better than anybody because they understand that it is all one, and they're always trying to make it all one. But don't ever lose yourself in it, right? integrate i think you got it going on you're going to have this new perspective and this new the new beginning and this new life it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be flavored differently right because it's change but it's guided change and it's needed change looks like the script is getting flipped right which is a wonderful thing all right pisces that's all i have um please consider liking and subscribing leaving a comment I'm trying to build the channel i want to I want, to, want to have I want to have that motivation to really pour into the channel and really give all that knowledge that I have. Um, I use it to save my own life, right? I had help, like I said, I had help with my wife and my lawyer. That she helped me a lot too. I had two people in my life that were really stable for me and really helped me move forward. And it changed me like night and day. Maybe I'll get my wife one day to do a testimony on who I used to be to who I became, and she'll testify to it, um, the transformation. And she even knows it was through things like astrology and tarot and esoteric studies, studying magic, all these types of things. It all helped change me. Not that I'm practicing magic or anything like that, and I don't condone it, right? Because you, you don't have you don't go half ass in anything when it comes to those types of things, right? But it's good to learn and understand. And you can kind of understand the energies and alchemize them. And I'll understand the difference in the ages eventually and, and, and understand understand why magic in and of itself and the way that it's performed is changing and why the old way will eventually die. And I'll explain what the old way was in the age of Pisces and all these good things. Hopefully we get there. Anyway, Pisces, I'm grateful for you here. If you don't want to like and subscribe and leave a comment, you don't have to. I'm just grateful that you're here watching the video. This wasn't the prettiest reading, but the energies change all the time. This is just at this current time what the energy showed me. Um, and if it doesn't resonate, go watch your other signs, okay? Um, I appreciate you being here. Happy August.